said in my non-spoiler review, Cruella is really all about setting up a sequel. Because at the end of the movie, once you see her become that iconic character, you of course want to see what she's going to do next. It's a lot like how we all wanted a Joker sequel after we saw that movie. I hope it doesn't take that long. They're supposedly working on one, but where is it? All right, but we're talking about Cruella, so I've decided to combine my spoiler review and my top five ideas for the sequel into a single video because people are really losing interest in this movie fast. I sure hope we get a sequel. I was surprised to see interest in the film drop out at the last minute. It was all the rage when the trailer came out and ticket sales seemed pretty strong. I'm hearing stories about it selling out in advance. Uh, but suddenly it seems like it might be more of a Dumbo or a Christopher Robin than one of Disney's billion dollar live action remakes. I don't think it's gonna do as poorly at the box office as Dumbo or Christopher Robin, but I am nervous at this point. I would say non-pandemic, it's shaping up to be more of a Mary Poppins or Oz the Great and Powerful performance wise than again, one of those billion dollar pictures. Uh, so far, out of Disney's live action rem remakes, only Aladdin is set to get a sequel. There was talk of doing another Jungle Book too, but that never materialized. And speaking of the Aladdin sequel, there hasn't been any movement on that since the writers were announced very early last year. So it's been a minute. Sadness, I want all of this. Anyway, Aladdin made a billion dollars. That should get a sequel for Pete's sake. Anyway, let's see what the opening uh, weekend box office looks like for Cruella. Be sure to tune in for Movie Math, which because of the holiday weekend will be on Monday. It's worth noting that the Disney, the original Disney animated movie was one of the highest grossing films of 1961 and that the Glenn Close movie got a sequel. So people like the story. I hope that people give it a chance. I don't know why it got a bad reputation before a lot of people even saw it. Anyway, Cruella is certainly hoping for a sequel with a delightful end credit sequence that really gets the ball rolling. So the big reveal, let's back it up a minute before we talk about the end credit sequence. The big reveal is that Cruella is actually the Baroness's long lost daughter. I know, great idea. I unfortunately saw it coming, I would say, as soon as everyone kept telling her to cover her hair up around the Baroness, I was like, all right. I wish they'd explain where that hair, why, why does the Baroness's child have two-toned hair? But anyway, I'm curious, at what point when you saw the movie did you pick up on what the big twist was? It's still, I loved it when it happened, but it took, I think, considering how quickly I picked up on it, I, I wish that it had happened sooner. But anyway, the Baroness had thought that her daughter had been disposed of. Uh, that's, as, that's as evil as she can get in a Disney movie so that she could pursue a career. And I thought that was an interesting commentary about you know, women having to be particularly cutthroat and, and emotionally, to some, some might argue, emotional, to emotionally cut themselves off if they want to, to, to move forward, especially at the time period that the movie takes place, which is, I think, another reason that maybe they decided to make it a period piece. But in reality, Cruella, or Estella, was uh, raised in secret by a maid who John the Valet had given her to, and the Baroness kills that maid at the beginning of the movie, thinking that the, the maid had come back to blackmail her over something else. She should have let her finish that sentence, maid. Oh, actually, she told Cruella or Estella to hide, so I guess she was gonna blackmail her over something else. And the Baroness decided to just kill her instead. And then Cruella grows up on the streets of London, Oliver Twist style, or Disney orphan style. We'll talk about the Disney princess angle in a, a couple of minutes, uh, moments in this video. Uh, but this all happens unbeknownst to the Baroness and to Cruella. None of them know about this past until the end of the movie. So the Baroness loves Dalmatians, and then Cruella kidnaps them because, long story short, one of them swallows an important necklace. But that, and that leads the Baroness and the fashion rumor mill to think that she made a coat out of, um, out of the Dalmatians. Cruella intentionally makes it look like she did and doesn't, doesn't set the record straight. She decides to, to let that, that become part of her, le her, her, her evil legend, even though she didn't do it. Uh, Cruella, though, keeps her mother's Dalmatians at the end of the movie. Now, I, I think her, the Baroness momentarily took them back, but Cruella keeps the Dalmatians, and she gifts a puppy to, to, both Ro, uh, to both Roger and Anita separately, with Cruella coming up with the names Pongo and Perdita. I thought that was a very interesting twist. And then we pull out from Roger's flat where, 
fired as the Baroness's lawyer, uh, for which he blames Corella, by the way. He's focusing on his true love, music writing, uh, and he sings the iconic Cruella de Vil song. So obviously the sequel hopes to include the meet cute of Anita and Roger via Pongo and Perdita. Although now, th now they also have jobs which are um, very useful, not just to Cruella, but the filmmakers. Uh, Anita is now a journalist who in the movie is responsible for making Cruella a star by writing about her exploits in the paper. And then also uh, Roger's a lawyer, which I'm sure will come in handy again. Now, before we get to my top five ideas for a sequel, first, as I said, let's talk about how Cruella has been turned into a total Disney princess, all thanks to the opening of the film. A all, the, all the boxes are checked. Abandoned as a child, a dead surrogate mother, a villain responsible for her difficult life. Emma Thompson is so giving off Disney villain vibes once you, once you start to see it. A mysterious object, the necklace, which is her claim, literally the key to her inheritance. And of course, that she's really a fashion princess. She thinks she's an orphan, but she's really fashion royalty, who at the end of the movie gets her mother's entire estate. I wonder if she also got her fashion. I mean, she, she Estella was killed off. Uh, Cruella let everyone think that she was dead um, because that's how she framed uh, the Baroness to go to jail. So I'm... I'm surprised that Cruella, I don't know. Oh, Estella left a will and left it all to Cruella. The police aren't really paying very close attention. <laughs> what Cruella, what's your social security number or whatever the UK equivalent is? Ah, oh, the jig is up. But anyway, she gets her, all of her mother's things, including Hellman Hall, which at the end of the movie, Cruella, you know, breaks off part of the sign, renaming it Hell Hall, which of course is from the classic um, story and Disney movie. Oh, and don't forget, as a fashion princess, she not only gets a ball gown, but on an on on unlimited number of, fa of fabulous different looks. All thanks to Artie, by the way, who is her partner in fashion, just as Horace and Jasper are her partners in crime. Although Artie kicks in a little bit there too. But delightfully, Cruella is also like Disney's descendants. I wonder if that also is responsible partially for the idea of this. Although Cruella has a son in that franchise. Uh, she's the child of a Disney villain. And for the first time on this scale, we get a Disney princess, therefore, who's got an evil side. They never really deal with, I mean, sometimes in the sequels, like the direct-to-video sequels, they would have the relative of a villain. But they've never really gone down that path in Disney in a big way. So this ends up being a mashup of Disney villains and Disney princesses which is genius considering how popular they are with fans. To create one that is both? Oh my God, I don't understand why it's not better accepted. Maybe they should have made it clear that that's what they were doing. Okay, so does that make you feel any better about Cruella when you think of it that way? All right, so let's talk my top five ideas for a sequel, and I'll be curious to hear your own ideas for one down below. And don't say your idea is not to make it. Come on, be nice. <laughs> All right, so number one. More Roger and Anita. This couple is vital to the original story and our fan favorites. The ying to Cruella's yang. Also, one of you pointed out, and I think it's true, that it's important that Cruella get a female friend. Her gang is all guys. And sure enough, that's Anita. Not only from the original stories, but here. They're, they knew each other as children, and Anita helps make her famous again as a journalist. And as every celebrity knows, as much as the press loves building people up, they also love tearing them down, and that could be really fun. Uh, also, Anita has a responsibility if she finds out about Cruella's illegal activities. So also, when, you, when uh, Kaven Novak from What We Do in the Shadows is your Roger, you should use him more. I really want to see more of Roger. Plus, we need to know why Cruella gives Roger and Anita the Dalmatians. Is she playing matchmaker? I think knowing Cruella, even if that's part of the plan, she likely has ulterior motives that benefit herself. So what could they be? I'm very curious. Uh, now, uh, I, it, just, it was such a big change to have her be the one to give the dogs to them. I'm very curious. I, mean, I think the screenwriters are very clever, as I said in my non-spoiler review. So I'm curious to see what they've come up with. And now that Cruella lo loves dogs too, or at least likes them, and Horace loves dogs, this could be really interesting. I like the dog. I mean, you know, in the original, the dogs, of course, could speak in the animated uh, classic. So when you flip it to focus on the humans, I think that the movie does a nice job of keeping dogs still in the mix and making this very much about people who love dogs. So I like that. All right, number two, the evolution of Cruella and the Baroness's relationship. Yes, fascinatingly, unlike almost every other Disney villain, the Baroness is not killed. 
which, you know, but simply sent to jail, even though she murdered someone. So she goes to jail. Corella didn't push her off the cliff, uh, which was what would have happened in a Disney movie, Disney animated movie. Uh, so the Baroness is not only Corella's mother, but I'm sure she has more to teach Corella, not just when it comes to fashion, but also to crime. I think Corella won't be able to resist going to visit her. I mean, Corella is clearly embracing her darker side. So not only does she probably want mentorship and a relationship with her mother to some degree, but also maybe she wants to use her mother as a way to make sure she doesn't go too far, a reminder of how dark things could get and how bad. She doesn't want to become her, 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 her arch nemesis, as she says. Although Jasper clearly is there also to keep her in check, and we'll talk about him more in a moment. I'd love to see what jail looks like for the Baroness. I'm imagining a cross between Goodfellas, Hannibal Lecter, and Hugh Grant in Paddington too. Oh, I would love Hugh Grant to be in the mix here somewhere. And of course, don't forget that the Baroness swore her revenge. She's probably not gonna let this go. Cruella made a horrible mistake. She left her arch nemesis alive. I think this is gonna be great. Round two between these two. All right, so number three, Jasper and Cruella have got to get together. Now, some of you tried to say that their relationship was more like brother and sister, but I think Jasper like likes Cruella. He pays too much attention to her hopes and dreams and just to her in general, I think for him not to be interested in her romantically. Otherwise, I think he'd act more towards her like Horace. Uh, so, and also, Jasper's a cool guy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. I think he would have found someone else if he wasn't pining for Cruella. Anyway, let's see that relationship grow. I thought it was, you know, both touching and tragic when he said, I can't seem to say no to you. And she said, that's one of the things I like best about you. I was like, oh no, it's an abusive relationship. So anyway, uh, for her, I would like for her to come to see Jasper as more of an equal than a henchman. I don't know how he got demoted to henchman. I mean, they started at all the same level or Corella below them. And now they're henchmen for her. That uh, didn't sit total. I mean, Horace is very henchmany, but not Jasper. I think he should at least be her number two. After all, he was the one who thought of and figured out how to get her that job at Liberty's, and she wouldn't even be where she is today if not for what Jasper did. So Cruella might be the ringleader, but Jasper has really good ideas. He, sh he should needs to be more in the loop. And also, again, he's clearly Cruella's conscience that keeps her from turning into the Baroness. Uh, the Baroness didn't care for her husband. All right, so four, a bigger role for Artie. Oh, for sure. Like the Baroness, Cruella cannot make her fabulous fashions all alone. And Artie, as I said, uh, is clearly her partner in fashion. He's the newest member of her gang at the end of the movie, and he's gonna clearly continue to create fabulous looks with her. We need to see that, though, on screen. So it can't just be, oh, I guess that he's helping her make the clothes. We got to see that. We have to see them collaborating. I think that's really important. And I want to see a bigger role for him overall. Uh, he and Horace have some really nice moments in the movie. Horace and Drag, saved by Artie. Perhaps a friendship could develop there. Then finally, number five, more crime. We can't forget about the villain part of this new Cruella. Again, as I said, the genius of this version is that she's a mashup of Disney princess and Disney villain. So you have to have villainous aspects clearly there so that some of you will stop complaining. <laughs> I kid because I love. But anyway, um, Obviously, she won't kill people like the Baroness. I mean, I think those are like the degrees of evil. Like, Baroness is full Disney villain, and Cruella is like uh, the, you know, the middle ground. I know that some of you will feel it's anti-hero, but I, I don't think so. I think Cruella still acts very selfishly in the movie, and she's very mean, very, very mean, very cruel, you know, true to her name. That's obviously still there. And now she can just conveniently blame it on her mother. I, I can't wait for Jasper someday to say, you know, you're so like your mother. <laughs> Then it'll truly be a relationship. All right, so anyway, um, she won't kill people like the Baroness, but she's definitely, again, as I just said, in that gray zone. Like the movie's jailbreak sequence was so much fun. I thought that was great. So Cruella does say at the very end of the movie that she does have some ideas for what they should do next. So let's see them do a lot of stuff. I wanna see a lot of capers. I wanna see things like sabotaging her competitors in, in fashion uh, and also on the social s circuit, but also maybe some heists to get what she wants even though she's been told no. Because when you take out the wanting to kill puppies part, what's left is a woman who wants what she wants even if she's been told no. And I think they got that part right Perfectly, really, really good. So those are my ideas for a Cruella sequel. Share your own thoughts down below, subscribe today, and don't forget to join me on Sunday for our watch along party. Uh, you have to have your own copy of the film on Disney Plus to watch along, uh, but we're gonna watch the film together at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
and have a real good time. So I hope to see you then. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.